to relax away the cosmological constant problem. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you for uh, having me. I really appreciate being here. So, yeah, I will be talking. Um, Actually, there were very many men, women, and children who tried to, to solve cosmological constant problems, so I'm not the first one. But uh, yeah, I will talk about our work with the with the power of the last one, like the Leifert's lab and Rico in Turin. In uh, we have a paper about this. So the uh, first I'll start with, with, with the math motivations. Then. Uh, our idea, what we try to construct, is some uh, some effective field theory, some model in which we write Lagrangian and we follow the dynamics, the evolution of the, of the universe in, in this theory. And we can start with the arbitrary, uh, relatively arbitrary cosmological constant uh, contribution to this action, and that uh, dynamically the universe will settle down to to the state in which we see universe now, so with a small cosmological constant. So that the for the event stage and the place where we find ourselves now would, would happen uh, compulsory as a, as, a, as a consequence of the dynamics of the evolution in the place where the uh, cosmological constant is small, much smaller than the uh, value which you put in the, in the action by itself. Yeah, so the main motivations for, for this activity, of course, as you know, there is a the mo most accepted solution for cosmological constant problem is the anthropic solution, and it still remains a solution. I'll not say anything bad or good about it, so we are just go going in another way. And uh, here I, uh, yeah, I would quote Silas Dimopoulos, who says uh, that uh, the problem of anthropic principle, main problem is that uh, there is a, always a danger of premature application, so we want still to try to find a model in which it is possible to solve cosmological constant without uh, appealing to the anthropic principle. Uh, another motivation for us was that there are many, on the market there are many models and many people discussing dark energy. And uh, I, I, somehow original motivation for discussing dark energy and physics of dark energy is uh, the fact that there is a cosmological constant and uh, uh, accelerated expansion of the universe nowadays. But uh, none of this uh, theory is actually tell us anything about the solution for cosmological constant. Yeah. So, so in, uh, in our case, the, our model also predicts some, some properties of dark energy. And in this sense, we, we are connecting dark energy to the, uh, to the cosmological constant. So, uh, also, it's not probably the unimportant that uh, we still make some predictions. So there is uh, new physics in the in this model, there is a, there are infrared gravity modifications, and uh, it's a low scale, low energy scale physics. So it's a physics on the scales of uh, mid electron volts. So there is some uh, new physics in this, uh, and uh, then also, uh, also it requires uh, analogy condition related theories, and it's uh, interesting just theoretically because in principle uh, it's not clear whether it's possible to to find a new condition or to find a theory in which uh, null and condition will be violated consistently. There are no obvious abstractions, but there are no also examples of new complete theories uh, in which the null and condition is violated. Yeah, and uh, I concentrate on motivations mostly because the, the real outcome is not very appealing, it's not very beautiful what, what, we, what we managed to construct. So for us it was mainly a proof of principle trying to construct something which works and satisfies all the constraints. But it's not uh, the most elegant thing you ever seen. Yeah. So okay, the the main idea which we based on is uh, is actually the, the attempt to solve cosmological constant problem by uh, by relaxing is uh, already more than 30 years old, and uh, it was a paper by Abbott. And uh, so his idea was there is a uh, to add a, a scale of field to the uh, to the action, which uh, which would have a uh, potential energy which uh, scans a, a large range of values and this uh, scalar field would, would uh, slip down the, the potential and uh, scan the cosmological constant. So the potential has two main contributions. First there is a uh, contribution which is just linear in the, so it's a down slope, a potential with, with the slope and the, this coefficient in front of it can be small because it is the, in the theory uh, without any potential the theory without any potential will be symmetric under shifts of the of the scalar field. So the adding a small linear potential is a, a technically natural thing. And also, if he wants to, this shift symmetry would be anomalous uh, with respect to some uh, some gauge group. 
So the, the, uh, when the group becomes uh, strongly coupled, confines, it also creates the uh, axiom-like potential for the field. So it's a slope with the, with the wiggles. And then the way uh, the evolution proceeds is that this uh, first interaction, this, uh, this constant are chosen so that they would correspond to the current Hubble scale. Yeah, so it's not even cosmological constant scale, it's not really electron volts, it's very small scale, from the amount of 30 electron volts. And uh, uh, this lambda h is the scale of the DH group. So for Hubble scales for the universe, this is larger than the, uh, than the, the inverse lambda h, the, the, uh, the temperature is high enough so that the uh, gauge group is not confined and there, is, there are no barriers. So this, uh, the, the, the barriers appear in the universe only when the Hubble scale goes below the, the scale on the H, the, the, the small scale of the, the, the scale of this uh, group. Uh, and then, so that's, then correspondingly the, this field slope, uh, it goes down slope for, uh, in, the, in the universe with a high energy, but then once the Hubble scale reaches this, uh, this constant, then the barriers appear and the, uh, the evolution, the scanning of the cosmological constant stops. And then uh, field, the scalar field gets stuck in one of the medium. So this was the original idea. And uh, so there were many problems with this. And the, the, the first one was already noticed by another itself. So that's why it was not a solution for a for cosmological constant problem. But uh, as, any, uh, as any mechanism which is sensitive to the current value of cosmological constant, it should operate in the empty universe in which there is no other, uh, other matter than the, than the cosmological constant itself. So the, this mechanism uh, takes such a long time, the scalar field takes such a long time to settle down, so that the universe expands and everything which was there gets diluted. So the end result of this relaxation is that the, unit, the cosmological constant corresponds to the any value which we wanted to, to set, but there is nothing else, which is not really the case in our universe, yeah? because we have a universe in which there is matter, and uh, in the earlier stages there was a... Uh, um, much more uh, energy density in the matter than in the cosmological constant. Yeah, and then, so here comes the, the importance of the nullity condition relation, because as we know, in the, uh, for, uh, say for a, for a perfect fluid in the expanded universe, the, the energy density decreases. So this is the equation for energy density, which is, which is, the, which is determined by the equation of state. So whenever the energy density plus the pressure is positive, the energy density of, the, of this uh, component is decreasing. So it just says that in, in expanding universe, there will be less and less energy density. So uh, unless we can uh, construct some matter for which P plus rho is uh, negative, there is no way how to increase Hubble. Yeah, there is no way how to increase the energy density. So we need some, uh, some sort of theory which would create energy density in the expanding universe. So as the universe gets expanded, the energy density becomes larger and larger. And uh, so at that time, there were no theories on the market of this sort. And uh, that's why it was uh, like a showstopper for this uh, activity. But uh, now there are some, uh, some effective field theories which do this. And uh, so we're trying, so our key idea is to, to construct a, a scenario in which we attach the, uh, the matter of this sort, which violates knowledge condition, can create the hot universe from the empty state to, to the uh, to the part which, uh, to the mechanism which relaxes the solid yeah. And another problem in the original model, which was, which was not uh, paid much, much attention at that time, is that the scalar field actually doesn't, uh, most of the time it doesn't involve classically. So it's evolution because the slope is so small, its evolution is always dominated by quantum fluctuations. And there is no predictive way to say where, where it, it ends up. Yeah, because the solution for a classical equation doesn't really give to the uh, the correct time, evolution time. So in the end, uh, this uh, original idea was, uh, is very similar to landscape, having just many, many linear, and uh, there is no, there is a distribution, some distribution of the, uh, in the universe of regions with the different values of cosmological constant. And we try to avoid it. So, yeah, so for us, it's, it's an important constraint. But we want to, to, to have a predictive model in which we which is which evolution in time dominate, dominated by classical motion, so we want to know where we end up uh, in the minister.
Yeah, so this is the sketch of, of, uh, of this construction. It has many stages, so the way we construct it is it's modular. We wanted to solve this problem separately and then try, try to attach uh, to each other different parts. So the, the main stages are, are here. So here on the plot, you see the evolution of the energy density in the universe on the Hubble scale with time. So first, there is a very long period of, of relaxation, so only some some part, some sort of scalar field which whose potential energy scans a large range of, of uh, uh, energy densities. Uh, and so this is not to scale because this part takes uh, ages. Uh, in, actually, in, in our default model, it takes 10 to the 60 Hubble times, 10 to the 60 ages of universe. So it's, it's very old. Our universe is very old in this part. Uh, then there is a, so then there is an important part which is triggered. So this relaxing field, once, once the energy density in the universe, once the cosmological constant reaches the absorbed value, uh, well, one has to trigger the other sector which would violate the energy condition and create energy density. So we, we try to design a trigger. Then there is a sector which does violate the energy condition and recreates the universe from the empty state to, to the energy densities. Uh, which would be enough for to proceed with inflation and the usual uh, probably the universe. So then we have an inflation, and in a sense, it is uh, yeah, we are not interested in how to continue this line because then you can attach your favorite inflationary model and then heat and all that, and then absorb uh, uh, part of the of the problem the universe. Yeah, so there are main stages, and we try to describe all of them. Uh, yeah. So, in a sense, it's not, as I said, it's not very elegant. It looks like uh, like this uh, machines. There is even a term, it is LED dollar machines for, uh, for doing simple tasks. So, in that, it looks more or less like this. Like, uh, there are many components which are attached to each other, and it looks very overcomplicated. Uh, so, what we need for, for it to work is that we need some relaxation field, like the analog of the original other field, that slow, that slowly and uh, Democratically scans uh, through a range of potential energy, so it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any fine tuning hidden there. If, if we start with the same model and change the cosmological constant, which is written in Lagrangian, then we should still proceed, the evolution should proceed in the same way and end up in the same, same state. Uh, then there should be some trigger which starts the, the analogy condition violation, starts to, to create a universe at the moment when the cosmological constant is comparable to the absorbed value. Then we need, uh, as I said, like the sector which violates the uh, condition and it starts with a small uh, bubble and a uh, small uh, energy density and builds up enough energy to continue with the, with the inflation and the uh, minutes. And then in the last but not least, it's not so, so uh, although there are on the market models which start with uh, like creating the universe, like gallery engineering, this may be called uh, models in which you start it's possible to start with a low energy universe and create build up energy density. Uh, it's often not discussed how to transfer this energy to the standard model, how to transfer it to the, to the uh, normal matter. So this way we take care uh, about if we want to solve this model. Uh, then what is important, the main constraints of this, that all this, uh, all the stages of the trigger and the uh, the creation of the universe, creation of the universe, and transferring the energy to the to the matter field should take uh, should should be relatively fast. So, because the the relaxation field is still keeps relaxing, so we should uh, create the universe in a time scale which is much shorter comparison to the time in which the cosmological constant will change, the vacuum energy of the scale field changes, uh, and then we also have to be a full controller of this uh, uh, of this. Uh, a mechanism in order to, to be sure that they don't uh, change uh, the value of the vacuum energy. Yeah? Because if we say that uh, and then something happens and the uh, theory goes in a different phase, it, this most probably also will end up in a different vacuum with a different value of the vacuum energy. And we should take care that since since we want to create energy densities much larger than the cosmological constant, which we relaxed, we should be take we should take care that we don't change the energy of the vacuum uh, on the scales larger than the absorbed value of the cosmological so this is what we, this is the tasks which we try to, to solve. Okay, so I will then go one by one and, and discuss all the all the parts. Then the, the relaxing sector, it's uh, it's easy to see that it's also not so trivial. We could say that yeah, why would we just take a scale canonical scale if we put it on this gentle slope, it will go down slowly and then it will scan large uh, 
the wide range of the, of the energy densities. Well, actually, there are contradicting conditions which we have to impose on it. And uh, yeah, it, it, it comes exactly from the fact that we want the evolution of the scalar field to be classical. So if we, if we wanted to, to roll slowly, yeah, because we wanted to mimic at any point of time, we wanted to mimic cosmological constant. It's, it's uh, vacuum energy, it's uh, potential energy should dominate the kinetic energy. So it should, its stress energy tensor should look like cosmological constant. So we should roll slowly. It means that the slope, the slope of the potential, if the potential is just linear, should be gentle enough. Uh, but on the other hand, if the slope is too gentle, and it's the only source for the velocity of the field, then the quantum fluctuations in the field will be larger than the amplitude of the of the uh, of the change in the in the in the field value due to uh, quantum fluctuations will be larger than the one which is uh, comes from the classical evolution. So it means that the, the, the dynamics of the field will be not classical, will be dominated by random jumps up and down the potential. So and this we don't want to have. And this puts uh, contradicting conditions on the slope. And then if we put this together and say that we want field with slow rolls nowadays and uh, ask ourselves when what is the Hubble or what is the energy density at which uh, it starts to, to, to be dominated by carbon fluctuations and the answer would be uh, for the MEB which is uh, yeah, which says that if we put kind of field like this in the universe with a, with a Hubble or with the energy density larger than this uh, that it will be dominated by quantum fluctuations. So we cannot, by just putting a scalar field, canonical scalar field, we could not realize anything which is larger than 10 mega electron volts, which is not very really useful, of course, because we know that the, the physics which we know already corresponds to the larger energy scales and will contribute like, to in the larger scales to the cosmology point. Yeah, so, but then we also know where to look for the way out because uh, there are some models of inflation. In, particular cost, cost compensate is a cost inflation of such a model in which field can, can keep rolling even though there is no slope. Yeah? So there are, there are such inflationary models in which the potential doesn't have any slope but, uh, but uh, the, the dynamics is still classical. Yeah, and the example of this here which I put is the, is the cost compensate and this is the example which we would also use. So we can uh, look at the effective field theory which is described by, by action which is just uh, some function of, uh, of a kinetic term of the scale of field, and add to it also technological constant and, the, and this uh, slope in potential. Yeah, so in general, this function, if, if this function has a medium somewhere, then uh, there is an effective field theory describing the fluctuations of, uh, of this field around this, the, the position in which the kinetic energy, yeah, the velocity of the field, corresponds to the value at which the P, P of X has a medium. Yeah, and uh, this is a very special point because uh, there is no special kinetic term for this field at this point. So there is no there is no term which, which corresponds to the special gradients, and one has to add the higher the, so the higher derivative terms which actually contribute to the quadratic action which makes this field properly. Yeah, and uh, so what is special about this sort of uh, models that here the velocity of the field determined not by the potential but the position of the minimum of this function P of x. So by default, this, the, the, the path default vacuum solution for this uh, scalar field is a rolling solution with a constant velocity. And uh, this means that one can switch off the potential at all and it will not be dominated by quantum fluctuations. Yeah. So this scalar field like this, which rolls down, but uh, the velocity of the roll is not, is not fixed in terms of the slope, it's just fixed in terms of the, uh, of the fundamental scale of the theory. Yeah. And then uh, one can get one well, can ask what is the ratio of quantum to classical uh, variation of the field in one Hubble time. And this sort of model just depends on the ratio of the Hubble scale to the, to the scale of the, which appears in, this, uh, in the action for this, which is also a cutoff scale of the effective field theory. So for Hubble scales which are below the, the parameter, this uh, energy scale n, the, uh, the evolution is dominated by, uh, by, class, by classical uh, motion. So it doesn't, we can, make the slope smaller. So the answer to the question, what is the maximum cosmological constant we can reliably relax uh, in, this, uh, in this sort of scenario is that it is determined ju just by the scale of the field. Yeah. So, uh, on the other hand, this, is, this, this theory has also a nice feature that if we add the potential to this, to, to this theory, then it the field will still feel the force from the potential and it will tend to roll faster. So if the potential is down slope, it will tend to roll faster and faster. 
In a sense, if the slope is gentle enough and the universe is, uh, the Hubble scale is large enough, so the, 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 the perturbation of the velocity on top of the, uh, on top of the vacuum solution will be given by the usual slow roll uh, solution, which means that this deviation becomes larger and larger as the Hubble scale decreases. So as the Hubble friction decreases, the field will, will feel the potential more and more and will accelerate more and more. And uh, since this is an effective field theory, which is actually valid only for the velocities in, the, in some finite range around the, the minimum, uh, then it's, it's natural to, uh, to expect that, that this, uh, this theory will, will change, the, the dynamics of this theory will change once the velocity will, uh, yeah, once well, the correction to the velocity will reach the, the velocity which is given by the, by the effective field theory action. So, and this, this provides like a way how this, how this uh, construction can be sensitive to the, to the value of the cosmological constant. Yeah, because usually the problem is that the, uh, it's hard to invent a theory which would be sensible, sensitive to the, to the value of the Hubble scale, yeah, to the value of the, of the cosmological constant. Uh, so, and this is exactly what in our theory, so this condition that, that this field which rolls down accelerates by the, by the force which it gets from the potential. So that the effective field theory breaks down. So when this part is comparable to the other part, is what fixes uh, what is this is what determines the value of the cosmological constant. Yeah, so in, in this solution, the cosmological constant is just given uh, the sum combination of the parameters in the, in the action. So I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't understand this. So what you're saying that the theory is 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 singular in the presence of this linear potential term. The theory is somehow singular in the flat space limit? Uh, H is, goes to zero? It is singular in a sense. So, so this is an attractor solution. Yeah, if you put it in the empty universe, mm -hmm. you put this, this uh, it will just be, the solution will be different. In a sense that, I guess you haven't told us the solution. I mean, you're saying yeah, that yeah. So this you're is, saying this that is when a solution. the opposite, that when H is is big, this is a small perturbation. Yeah. But then this perturbation becomes more important. Yeah. When H so so this yeah. Is so what I guess maybe I'm asking is what happens. Sorry, when H is small. Yeah. I guess so what I'm what asking is what happens when H yeah, is small. Yeah. So the, the solution will look different. It will be so the field will accelerate. Yeah. It will. So there are two sources which affect the velocity. The first is this m, the, the velocity is given by m squared. Yeah. This comes from the P of x uh, action, but then there is also a slope which, which has, provides a force in this field. So if you put it in the empty space, then of course it will just start to accelerate immediately, and then in the finite time, it will reach to phi dot larger than, uh, than m squared by, yeah, by, by order one, and then, uh, then it exits the regime of validity. Yeah, in a sense, it, it will, in final time, this, this effective field theory will break down and just exit the regime of parity. So this is what we use. Yeah, if we start with a universe with a large Hubble, then of course, uh, the, this effective field so theory Hubble, is a good description. If something like Hubble friction doesn't slow it down, there is some condition that says that... So what, what Hubble friction affects is the deviation of, the, of this uh, velocity from the, from the vacuum from the velocity in the back, okay. which corresponds to, yeah, it is related to the fact that it violates now. I see, that's the way to think about it. Yeah, yeah so what if you think about what's going back side? to that velocity. Yeah, yeah, so, so because if you have too much slope or not enough age, then you run away from that. Yeah, exactly. That's yes. the way to think about it. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. so the way to think about also this solution in the expanding universe is that, the, the so what, what Hubble friction does, it, it gets of the, expansion of the universe, it dilutes any perturbation from the minimum. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if there is no slope, that it's, this field tends dynamically to end up in the minimum. And if you start here, then still all the velocity, which, which the velocity deviation of here from the minimum will get reshifted. It's actually reshifted as a, as a, as a macro, yeah, as a power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what happens, yeah. So if you put it in a, in a flat universe, it just uh, exists. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Okay, on the other hand, we of course uh, we want this exit to happen around now, so on the scale of our solution. So it should happen in the time when the universe is as large as ours and the Hubble is as low as ours. 
but we want this field to still scan slowly the cosmological constant at the same time. So although it accelerates fast enough so that to break down the effective field theory description, it should still uh, it should still grow so that the, the change of the vacuum energy of this field, change of the potential energy of this field is small enough so that we would not feel so we would percept it as a cosmological constant. So that there would be no uh, large variation of the of the Hubble due to this field. Yeah, which means that the in the sense, you can relate it as a, as a slow roll parameters now. Usually we talk about slow roll parameters as a h dot over h squared due to inflation, but this is also related to the uh, to the equation of state of the dark energy. So in this in this model, the, this sector provides the energy density. This energy, which is residual cosmological constant, is in the dark energy now, and it changes in time, but we want it to change slow enough so that it would still look like a dark energy. Uh, and this imposes a constraint that we know that when this happens, the, 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 the change of the uh, of the Hubble scale is proportional to the, to the scale of the, of the theory, which sets the scale of the theory in terms of the cosmological constant now and the, uh, and the slow row parameter or equation of state parameter of dark energy, which cannot be too large. So this, this quantity is, for the, uh, it is bounded by observations to be less than 5% uh, which, which, said, which tells us already that, uh, that the maximum cosmological constant which we can relax if we use the fact that this scale corresponds to the median equivalent world scale so we, so we use the gross compensator of the median equivalent world sort of cutoff so this maximum value is of, of the order of one uh, TeV so it was a pleasant surprise we are happy that it's not below TeV uh, it's not, it, it came out not not because we like uh, physics beyond the standard model so it's just uh, Sort of, it is about right to to address the cosmological constant in our universe where we know that there should be the order of TV contribution. So, yeah, so so the bottom line, so this sort of construction can can be used to relax the TV sort of cosmological constant. Just this part to go down. Yeah, we don't, we don't discuss yet the part how to create it in our software. So epsilon naught is a slow parameter for this for relaxation phase. It's, it's at an hour moment, yeah. It's today. So yeah, it's so it's something like W, yeah. you know, W okay. plus 1 yeah, yeah. for the dark energy. So yeah, it is today. Yeah, uh, and then just to... Yeah, so this it responds to a very long time and also very very large field expression, if you care about field expression. So this this, uh, relax, relax, uh, this field uh, in the relaxing sector, it, uh, its variation is uh, like 10 to the 60 uh, one scale. Uh, yeah, ju just to, to, to remind, so I, I said that cosmological constant here is fixed by the by the some parameters in the Lagrange, and then we know that, the, that there is a large hierarchy. This is the problem which we have to address in the beginning. So the question, then, then just to know that the, this large hierarchy, which is the ratio of absorbed cosmological constant to the maximum one, we can relax. Yeah, of course, it's not a ratio which we all know 10 to the 120, which corresponds if you would the maximum cosmological constant to be a plan, but it's still 10 to the 60. And uh, so this corresponds to the ratio of the parameters in our action. So there is the, the slope and the, the parameter of the slope of the potential and the uh, typical scale of the ghost yeah, so, so we have to put this number 10 to the minus 10 in our Lagrangian, and this is a fine tuning, but it's a technically natural fine tuning. So it's, it's okay to put a small number in this action because this lambda is protected by the shift symmetry of the, of the field. So there are no uh, relative corrections. Yeah, of course, as any solution which is not uh, anthropic, once we predict the value of once we want to, uh, the value of cosmological constant to be predicted by the Lagrangian on the right, we have to put inside this small number. So it's not it doesn't come out. Of no, it is, uh, we have to write it down. Okay, then if we switch to the second sector, so now we are in a, we sort of managed to to to, to invent the sector which starts with a large cosmological constant, rolls down so that the cosmological constant is comparable to ours, and so it breaks down or something happens to it. So now we want to to attach to it some some sector which creates the universe from this empty state with the energy densities which are which would be enough to, to proceed with the with the Big Bang universe, as we, as we know. Yeah. So uh, then, for this, again, we need we need some matter, which 
which violates non-energy conditions. So if we just put it in terms of uh, perfect fluid, we need P plus rho to be positive. But uh, more technically, it just means that the stress-energy tensor, if you multiply it by the null vectors, this has to be positive. So, uh, so we need something which would violate this inequality. So this, this inequality is called null-energy condition, just because K are the null vectors. So we need some method which, which, uh, which violates this in order to create the universe from, from this, in order to create uh, energy density in the universe starting from the empty stage. Yeah, and usually, in the normal theories, if you just play around with some uh, uh, usual field theories, then uh, this uh, violation of this inequality corresponds is associated with some instability. They are always either lost or gradient instability. There is no way to, to write down a simple theory which would violate it. But uh, there, are, uh, uh, there are theories in which it's possible to do. And it's also clear to, to see how they are connected So this, to, the, to the theories which we used in the previous previous section, because what we need, we need some theories which would evolve normally either in the, uh, uh, in the, in the state which is the, in which p plus rho is equal to zero, yeah? So if we can have a theory which evolves classic, which can, which can have a classical solution for which p plus rho is zero, then maybe we can deform it so that we can have it negative. Yeah, usually this quantity is positive. And this, uh, uh, this sort of theories are the same theories as I described before. It's like the cross condensate is an example of such theory, and uh, uh, there are Galilean theories which are also examples of such theory. So the, the simple way to think about it is that if you if you put the same the same sort of P of X theory, the cross condensate, but in the potential which has upslope, so what will happen? Of course, this upslope potential will tend to slow down the field, but because it's a, its velocity is uh, because any, any slowing down or moving from this minimum of the P of X gets diluted as the universe expands. So what will happen that the potential will try to shift this field, the velocity of the field to be lower than its value of the minimum, but all this deviation will be diluted in the, uh, by the universe expansion. So there will be some, uh, some steady solution in which field moves a bit slower than it would move with, uh, in the absence of the potential, but will just continue rolling up the potential. So this this is the field which really can roll up the potential and build up poten potential energy this way. Okay. So now you see why it is weird to you. One thing is to, to imagine that something can just roll without be any force being applied. But the thing is, is so much wants to roll that it even rolls up if you put the potential with a, uh, with a small enough slope. Okay. So one just has to put the, one just has to control the slope, one has to make it slow enough so that the, there would be no instability. In this uh, and another example would be a Galilean theory. So apart from the, uh, from from terms which are like powers of kinetic term, which are also the simplest the simplest example would have a term like this, like kinetic term times box pi. And in this theory is one can uh, one can violate now the condition with a uh, with a large uh, Speed or much amplitude in the sense that one can one can uh, accommodate changes in Hubble which are comparable to Hubble itself. So one can violate the other one which condition create energy density in the universe fast enough. Yeah, so the once we have very similar theories in the sense theory which, which describes the, the going down the, to relax and the theory which describes the creation of the universe, we can also invent the trigger which would be which, which would make the creation of the universe to happen exactly when the cosmological constant reach the observed value is a coupling between these two sectors which depends on the, the kinetic terms of these two sectors. And uh, so it's not, it's not hard to, to come up with a function like this which will do the job, but uh, unfortunately any function like this inevitably uh, drives the, the, this field evolution outside the region of validity of the field theory. So there is no way to describe the solutions of this sort when one field rolls down and then slows down or stops and starts the other field from, from being uh, not rolling to the rolling phase within the effective field theory. In this sense, this is the missing part and this is what we are working on to, this is what we need in the completion for this model so that we be able to describe the trigger so that one, that the, the one rolling theory would slow down and the other theories would start rolling from, the, from not being rolling. And uh, yeah, although there is no effective field theory description, there is no obvious abstraction for this uh, construction to exist. So we just assume that it should it should be possible to do this. 
and uh, then the, so that it should be possible to make field from the non-moving to, to shift it from non-moving stage to the moving stage. So, so our problem is to describe this analogy condition violating sector so that it would sit and wait to, for some for something to happen and then starts to move. Yeah? And uh, so we know that if there is a, some uh, phase transition from non-moving to the moving stage, then it is still reasonably, we can put in model dependent constraint. We can say that if this phase transition happens, then the change in, in the vacuum energy of this, of this model will not be larger than the cutoff of the phase criteria. Yeah? So our model dependent constraint will say that, uh, that uh, although we cannot discuss in the, in the two, full control the, how the field starts moving, we can, uh, we can say that the energy, that the shift in the vacuum energy between these two, sta two states uh, will not exceed the cutoff to the four. So this, this of course, forces us to have the, cu the cutoff of the theory to be also given by the value of the cosmology, energy density of the cosmological, energy scale of cosmological constant now. Yeah? So these constraints come from the fact that when trigger happens, then the, this, this neck violating theory goes from the non-rolling phase to the rolling phase, but since it is described as effective field theory with a cutoff M2, then we know that the vacuum energy density, vacuum energy of this theory will change in general, but it will not change much more than that. So, so, yeah. so do, I, do I understand right that so M1 and M2 are both of order of this 10 to the minus 3 yeah. scale, which is the energy scale associated with the Right. So in your theory is that is the Hubble in, 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 the, in the relaxation phase, is the Hubble ever bigger than this? Hubble is never bigger. So what, this is what In the relaxation that, phase, your Hubble is, is never... One, one, one TeV, yeah. So Hubble yeah. becomes a quarter this when the energy density becomes a quarter TeV. So this is what limits us from Hubble. Right. If we can, yeah, in a sense, if we can resolve this uh, trigger and make a put UV condition, describe this transition, be, be in the control of the change of uh, vacuum energy, of this of this model, then of course maybe we can try to raise the uh, also this TV. Okay, then uh, uh, then the other problem is that of course we want to create so the, the first field which relaxes it continues to roll and scan and uh, so as I said that the the epsilon parameter of it is is constrained to be not larger than uh, than 100. Yeah, so in a sense we want it to be, uh, it, it is still rolling with the finite, so the Hubble changes with the, with the finite speed, and then we have to create the universe, we don't have infinite amount of time in order to create the universe, so we have a finite amount of time to create the universe, to create the energy density in the universe, so that this, this scanning sector would not scan too much. And then we have to come up with a, with a, with a even less elegant construction of the, the Galilean theory, which would which will do the job and create the, unit, the large energy density in a, in a short time. So we need to violate energy condition of the one. We have to, to be able to build up a lot of energy in just one Hubble time or hundred Hubble times, <coughs> few Hubble times. Yeah, so for this, we put a, a scalar field which, which has an action similar to what I wrote before, but it has also parameters which, which depend on the, on the field position in the space. Yeah? So the, the coefficients of these three operators are uh, field dependent. And uh, of course, we still need shift symmetry in this, in this field. It means that they, they are field dependent only in some small range of the parameters uh, of the field, field space in the field. Uh, so the field space would look like, uh, it's also nice to think of it as it being periodic, then we also have the control of the evolution. So we have a field which is periodic, and the fields, in the field space, the coefficients uh, are changed, but only in the short, short range of the field space. So most of the time, it's uh, just shift symmetric, but then uh, there is a, the Galilean operator switches on in this in this stage and then switches off and then it continues to be symmetric. So what, what happens with this theory is that once it starts rolling, that it, it rolls, uh, we don't know where, yeah, it is natural to assume that it can start anywhere, but since it's periodic, at some point it will reach this uh, uh, this range in the field values in which the Galilean will switch off, so it will, it will start to, to evolve in such a regime so that it creates energy density and then we can try to deposit this energy density in something else. So, in a sense, there is a theory like this for which we can write explicit functions which do this, and... Uh, uh, and so, uh, sorry, I've, I've yeah. lost track. Um, sorry. The, you know, it's just, it's just me, but I, I, the, the, if you're using the Galileo now, mm -hmm. you, 
when you have this trigger, this trigger makes this Galilean start to move. Yeah, so theta. Well, it makes theta start to move. Yes. And then if you didn't have these terms, yes. I'm just not as familiar with the Galilean, what yes. would theta do? If you didn't have these special terms in the special sector you're doing now, if you had pure Galilean, what would theta want to do? Would it just slowly slow down? Or does it act like a ghost condensate that it rolls forever? What no, it, there is a solution which it accelerates. So it, it also moves, but the, uh -huh. yeah, okay, the Galilean by itself will have a just a solution in which the, the theta dot is constant. It will, not, it will just, so we, we see that we set it in motion and then it will, yeah, it will move like a ghost condensate. Yeah, the different it would stay in motion like it will a ghost stay condensate motion, yeah. if we didn't have this thing. And so this thing, so then, then it starts moving and then it eventually encounters this. It hits the button, yeah, it encounters the potential. special range of mm -hmm. theta and then you, now, then you're going to reheat, basically. You're going to heat up the standard model. When, yeah, at the end we'll go into the heat, and it's also a challenge how to make it, but so this sector by itself, what it does, it just builds up potential energy. So it starts it starts with a low... I guess it's not reheating. You want to yeah. transfer it to the inflow top or something. Yeah, so That's what then I will doing. shift to the... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what, what we want to do, we start with a field which which moves, uh, it moves with a velocity which is given by the medium electron world scale, but then it builds up a potential energy which is much larger, which is on the order of a TV scale, and uh, yeah, and then we transfer this potential energy to the uh, to, to the inflow. Uh, okay, so the, this this theory would be untractable in general, but uh, so this particular one is is uh, really tricky. So once we have so much freedom, as we have so many functions, that we can actually it, possible to make any solution which we want. So there are so many functions in Lagrangian that we just take solution which we like, plug it in the equations, and then determine the functions from this. So we can really write by hand the functions so that they will describe evolution of the universe the way we want. We can have Hubble changing any time. Any, so we we'll plug the Hubble which, will, which can change any way we want in time. So of course, it, it doesn't mean that all of, the, all of the solutions will be acceptable. So one has to still write the, uh, expand the, the action around the solution and look for the action for the perturbation and check that it's stable. But there are no, uh, there are no gradient instabilities, there are no ghosts. And uh, we also like it to, to describe a uh, field which, which is subliminal, which doesn't propagate so, so, so good, you know? And moreover, the, the, the scales change and we always want to be in control so that the cutoff of the scale will be also. Cutoff of this uh, model will be always larger than Hubble. Although Hubble grows by a lot due to this evolution, the cutoff is also field dependent. So cutoff is also growing, and one has to impose the condition that it's always above the Hubble scales. Yeah. So yeah, of course one has to choose these functions in a particular way, but uh, one can show that there is a like there is an ordered one, a finite range of parameters in which it's possible to do it. In this fine tuning doesn't seem to be to be related to the this is not related to the fine tuning of the so cutoff is defined function. such that any derivative of these functions is, uh, is, is smaller than or order of one in units of the cutoff. Is that right? In other words, arbitrarily, you have to consider arbitrarily high derivatives of these functions. And you're, when, when you want to, you have some function script that yeah, and you want yeah, to yeah. find out what the cutoff is. Yeah, I would you basically it. look at arbitrarily high derivatives of it. Yeah, but they're also operators, yeah, so they also, I have to compare that the, the operators will be more derivatives also. Right, right. You, you, you expand it out basically and require that all the operators you get in that expansion are, are small. Have a efficiency on each other. Okay. So it, is look, it, it does look already quite, uh, quite sad, no? Because we have to write uh, Lagrangian and it's... Uh, so, so now I have a... It, it, it seems to be so, but there is nothing which forbids it. It seems to be possible, but of course it's, it's, it's ugly. It, it, it would say that it would never happen. But uh, Paolo has a nice job with all this. But things like this do happen, <laughs> even though they are uh, ugly and disgusting, and, <laughs> and they happen on the both sides of the ocean. Is that is that Daryl's I know it's uh, Mike Farish, he's the, the guy who was behind Brexit. Uh. And he, he's now, he was a consultant for, yeah. for his career. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, so there is one, one more stage which is also not very, uh, 
uh, appealing in this way, which is uh, how to put, how to transfer the, the energy density in, the, in this uh, in this Galileo field, the potential energy of this rotor field, how to transfer it to the to the inflow, which is not trivial because usually there are models with the uh, of the of the Galilean inflation. So there are models in which or the models in which one creates energy density in the universe by this Galilean field. So it's possible to put energy in this field. But then the way one proceeds usually is to say that and then this theory breaks down at some point and this energy density gets released. And then since this thing is coupled to the to the matter fields as well, then of course some fraction of it has to go also to the matter field. So this is the way how the uh, the heating is usually described in this uh, in this sort of approach. But we cannot, of course, afford this because we want to have a controllable evolution through all the stages. Yeah, we want to 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 trans to to move the energy density from the potential of this uh, of the field also to the to the inflaton in a controllable manner, so that we not exit the regime of the field, and then we will be in control of the uh, of the vacuum energy of this field. Uh, so, so our solution would be that we add one more field. So we add one more dimension to the, to the potential, in a sense. And we change the potential of this other field depending on the position of the original field in the, in the, in the field space. So the, by creating energy density, we lift the other field in the, in the false minimum. But then it still sits in the false minimum. And then we can lower down the original minimum and then release after the energy density after. So in the, in the pictures, you can say that the potential for, for our uh, Galilean field would look like this. Yeah. So it, in this in this uh, period of field, field space, when when we create energy density, you can imagine that there is some just some potential which grows. Yeah. So this field grows and then it's, it grows up, builds up energy, and then of course we want the cosmological constant on the other side of this potential to be the same because we want. So so now we will be sitting somewhere there, but uh, no one will guarantee that somewhere there the level is the same as here. So we have to impose some symmetry and. We prefer to impose the, the periodicity, so this field, field space is periodic. That's why the energy density here, the, pot the value of the potential afterwards is the same as before. So, so the, our Galilean field would behave something like this. It would just rose up the potential, then uh, we, we can try to use this energy density or to shift it somewhere else, and then it, in a sense, rolls down. Yeah? But if it would be just like this, then we would end up also with the empty universe, because on rolling down, the, all the energy which we build up will just get uh, Diluted. So what we need to do, we add one more dimension to this picture, to this potential. So we add one more scalar field, and uh, its potential energy would change accordingly uh, to, to the changes of the in the in this field direction. Yeah. So first, so this is the, the this uh, second direction of the of the potential. Yeah. So when when our field just rolls, it sits the this uh, second field which stores the energy just sits in this minimum. And uh, then at some point before we reach the ramp, we have to create a sort of second uh, false minimum in this, in this uh, second direction. So then rolling up the ramp would correspond lifting this minimum. Yeah? So, so this, this are, all these pictures are cross sections of the potential in the, in the perpendicular. So we create the false minimum to this field. Then we, by rolling up, we pull it up so that it rolls in this, in this false minimum. Uh, then rolling down the potential corresponds to the lowering back this false minimum, but the, to lowering back the, the original uh, true minimum. But uh, since we since we managed to move this field in the in the orthogonal direction, so in this additional scalar field in a different position in the field space, then we don't lose the energy which we build up. So the potential energy remains on the same level, just because it depends also on the certain variable. And then after the field already rolls down and the, the Ghost condensate field already rolls down and continues to this uh, uh, in the shift symmetric phase. Then we can then the minimum disappears. So then it goes also periodic and also goes in the in the way that this minimum. So this picture would be matched to this picture. And then after that, this minimum disappears, and this will correspond to the to the to the energy, the potential energy in this uh, two field system being released. So this. I think would correspond to the heat when this minimum disappears, this field grows down and uh, oscillate there and this would correspond to the heat. So in this sense, this additional field which we add is like a waterfall field in the hybrid inflation. Yeah, so so our, our idea that we, we put, we build that potential energy, then this uh, gross condensate or Galileo rolls 
grow straight, and this would act as an inflaton or like an inflaton direction in the hybrid inflation. And then at some point, the other field, financial energy, is dependent on the position of this Galilean field in field space, so that instead of maximum, instead of minimum, it becomes maximum, and then this other field grows down and proceeds with the heating. Yeah, so this we also have to make by hand. And the, yeah, we can, in a sense, we have all the potentials uh, which I draw here. So it's not only on the middle of the pictures, but we can also write all these all the functions. And also, it's, there are many constraints on that. Yeah, so because uh, we want this to happen so that there is no uh, sensible like, reaction on the, on the Galilean field. So that it, passes, uh, it, it, it doesn't change the evolution of the, of the creation of the energy density and the, and the uh, following motion of it. And it also should happen so that there, there are no quantum fluctuations in the in this uh, waterfall field. So that the inflation would be the, the perturbation, the, the density perturbations would be uh, dominated by the perturbations in the original uh, Galilean field. And also, it should be designed so that it would be no, uh, so that it would be technically natural. So in a sense, there are many constraints on the parameter of this of this potential, but it seems that again we have so much freedom because we just try to design something by hands, so we can uh, we show that we are able to satisfy all this all this constraints. So this is a question, so, so, so um, uh, you know, you, you, as you said, you know, you have, you have many moving parts, right? Yes. But, but if you step back, there's a, there's a basic worry, right, which is that you have, in a sense, some, some input, which is that way back several steps ago, your, yeah. uh, your relaxing field, yes. right, reached some critical thing, and then whoop, a bunch of yeah. complicated things happen. Yeah. And then you're saying that after however many stages, four or yeah. five stages, the standard model, well, let's just say the, the inflaton yeah. has got this energy, got this yes. big kick, okay? Yes. So now I naturally wonder about kind of the, the clearly there's therefore now a reverse process of this, right? If yes. I sum up, so, you put so many stages in between, I can't follow it, but I just yeah. wonder, how, are you really confident? Is there some reason other than you say, well, I've checked every single step along yes, the way? Yes. You know, is there some simple reason to understand why I shouldn't be worried, why should I trust you, <laughs> to say that somehow this huge amount of energy now that you yes. put into this inflaton yes. isn't just gonna start this, your original relaxing field rolling again. And, yes. and, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's an intuitive worry. I'm not really sure I have a... Do you, do you understand what I'm asking? Yes. Because generally, because we have this idea coupled. that small effects cannot give rise to big effects exactly. unless you somehow have some entropy, some hidden, yes. something, some reservoir, you know, like a bomb, obviously, or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. Can you say anything about that? I mean, it makes total sense, but yeah, what, what, I, what I can say that uh, in this moving field, there is not much energy on so What we create, we create the potential energy of this field, yeah? of the Galilean field, of the, the, the gross index field. So it doesn't, it doesn't like, it, we, we make it in a way that it doesn't like react on the field itself. So it's the energy, the, the kinetic energy of this moving, moving parts is always, so this is why we can use this field. It's always on the order of cosmological, of the, uh, our current cosmological property. It's always on the order of million of one. So that's why also when we, dis when we discuss uh, uh, this action and say that uh, there are regions which are in which it is shift symmetric, so then we are, we are protected by the fact that in this shift symmetric region there will be no uh, potential for this field, and there will be no back reaction from this motion to the... I guess in all range. of this history, including yeah. your inflation, yeah, is it true that even during your inflationary phase, the energy density is never going to get larger than this magic number 10 to the minus 3 EV. Is that true? No, the Hubble never gets larger than this. Sorry, the Hubble. That's, yeah, because, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I meant to say. This is the what Hubble, it. That's, that never, never in this entire story is the Hubble going to get bigger. Than that. Yes, yeah. This, was, this is what limits us, and this is what also for me was counterintuitive. That we take a theory which has mini electron volt cutoff. And we build up the energy of the order of TV scale. Yeah. From That's sort of the maximum Hubble you could ever talk about within this it's effective theory. And you're, so you're saying you're always staying within that. Yeah, because we are sensitive yeah. only. Yeah, we are sensitive to the energy density yeah. only through gravity. Yeah? Right, right, I mean, right. In the 
in the particle physics language, you say that that you yeah, you get affected. The last by last right. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same uh, discussion. Which is a sign that I'll stop you with that. So you should, you should go on. <laughs> but I, I'm all, yeah, I'm always finished. Uh, yeah, but it's true that there is a something small which triggers something big. But on the language of the of the field theory, this this seems to work just because we build up potential energy which is not really, and the Hubble is always uh, below our cutoff, so we, we are not really. Uh, affecting the theory too much. Uh, but yeah, the, the way evolution process, then also there is some, so the, the, like the, the position of the field, uh, okay. the, the rolling down stage, the fine tuning of the, of the energy scale, you would say this corresponds to the, to the fine tuning of the position of the field, so that it would hit this, uh, this region at some particular time. But then in this, so in this scenario, if we make it this field periodic, so what, what happens that the universe gets created regularly. Yeah, so this, uh, the energy density gets created, then there is a reheating, then there is a not big bang, then it comes back, and then this, once the field crosses this region again, then it happens again. So one can, it's not, it, so it doesn't give any predictions. It's the eternal return, right? It doesn't, so, but it's not eternal because the, the original scanning field keeps scanning. So how it ends up, that the scanning field will cross the, the Zero of potential energy, so it goes to the negative, negative potential, and then it just ends up in the crunch. But yeah, it's a, it's like a fairy tale. It's not really. This doesn't really give any prediction. Yeah, yeah. So the only prediction for observation, which, which this story will tell you, is that uh, the cosmological constant now is not constant, so it should change. And we also uh, there is also prediction for the sign of the of the deviation of the equation of state for minus one, because we say that the, what happens that the energy density decreases. Yeah, so it's always positive that the P plus plus rho is always uh, larger than zero. Yeah, here, here I ended one, one slide about the, so what, what, we, what we're missing in this, so I would be very proud to say that we, we have an action, although it's completely ugly, it has many components, and we have to design it by hands, but it is te technically natural action, which within the original validity effective field view, it describes all the picture, from the start in the universe, the large cosmological constant, till the end. But there is only one missing part, is this trigger, which actually happens beyond the outside of the value of the field. So in order to be in control of this one part, yeah, although the constraints which you put in the parameters are independent on this, but we cannot claim that there is a there is a solution for this part. So for this we need the UV condition. And uh, then there is a there is only one uh, available in the market, UV condition for a ghost conductivity which uh, which comes from the uh, Lorentz violating gravity theories, which uh, make make the construction even less exciting. But, uh, so I know probably I, I would, if you're interested about the possible unique condition for a, for a ghost company, so. We can talk later. Yeah, we can talk later. Probably no one is uh, Yeah, and then yeah, I'll, I'll be able to, to conclude. So, so, for us it was more like a proof of principle. We just wanted to show that one can design such a theory in which dynamically it's possible to relax cosmological constants. They were known, uh, known. And, uh, so, because we have to to deal with the, with, the, with the very small scales of the vacuum energy, we have to be careful that we describe the fall the fall evolution through the, all the stages, especially the stages in which energy density is much larger than the cosmology potential. Uh, uh, so, it is possible only in the case if, if it is uh, really possible to construct uh, uh, to really complete the, the effective field theories which violate the knowledge condition. So it relies on the fact that there are theories, the theories which violate the energy condition, not only effective field theories, but there are also some materials, some unique conditions in which one can, one can build them in. Yeah, so, so then we also say that there, is, there should be new physics on the, on the mini electron wall scale, yeah, because we, we have all these uh, models which we build up. They have a cutoff of the order of mini electron walls. Although they are not coupled, yeah, so we, are not, we cannot, of course, predict particles with the electron world scales, which are coupled to, to standard models. So they are not really coupled apart from gravitation to us. Uh, so, and then this model also provides a connection between the cosmological constant and the present dark energy. So, the, although model dependent, but there are some other independent predictions, like the, the, the fact that the uh, uh, question of state should. should 
be different from the one I use most of the time. And uh, yeah, that's it. But maybe looking at the, all this, you, you will be just more convinced that the appropriate solution is the solution for this project. I guess it's hard to follow the the details. Hard to no, I, mean, I think. Well, let's let's thank the speaker again, and I'm going to hang around here. Anybody else wants to hang around and talk some more? Let's uh, let's release the rest of the Thank you very much.